Hello, everybody, and welcome. You see four faces in front of you, and they're the four faces of the program team at the Alzheimer's Society Waterloo Wellington. And all of us together want to bring you some information about activities. I'm going to ask each lady to announce their name and tell you what they do. So if we could start with my fellow PEC. PEC means Public Education Coordinator. Janine's going to unmute herself, and she's going to tell you who she is and how long she's been with the society. Hello, my name is Janine Wilson, and as Robin said, I am a Public Education Coordinator for the Society, and uh, I've been here seven years now. Great expertise to have on board. Thanks, Janine. If I could uh, ask our Minds in Motion Coordinator to speak next for a moment. Hi there, I'm Jennifer Newsom. I'm Minds in Motion Coordinator, and I have been with the Society for just over two years now. Welcome, we're glad to have you. And the newest member of our team, tell us what you do and who you are. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Sydney Jarvis. I'm the Community Programs Coordinator at the Alzheimer's Society. And like Robin said, I am the newest member of the program team um, and I'm going on five months with the Society now. And we're delighted to have you. All four of us really want everybody to benefit from activities. Activities are a super important part of our lives. And so we've got a presentation for you. And I hope that it will answer some questions, give you some ideas. At the end of the presentation, there'll be information on how you can contact the Alzheimer's Society. We would like it if you would reach out to us with comments that you have, questions that you have. If you need any form of support, we're here for you. So stick with us and we'll give you all the stuff you need to know. Thanks very much. This is called Activities for Connection. And what we're gonna focus on is some personal and leisure activities, um, how you can share information that will help other people do activities, uh, a little bit about visiting, uh, connecting with supports to stay safe and healthy. Um, so how do we connect with the person who's living with dementia? Because sometimes that can become challenging. And we want to do it mainly through activities. Activity is a great way to connect, but it's certainly broader than just recreation. It's really important to remember that people have strengths and abilities and interests, and they vary from person to person. When you look at that palm print on the slide, you'll see there are many colors, many words. What might jump out at you is the word personalized. And that's so important because what interests one person will not interest somebody else. So we really want to tap into what's right for that particular person. And we also wanna remember that when we're talking about activities, the real focus is about the doing and not the completed product. What's important is the journey more than the destination when we're talking about activities. So when we're talking engaging in meaningful activities, what we wanna do is do something that increases somebody's mood. What we want to do is pick activities that are important to somebody. We want them to be challenging enough, to be interesting and to be satisfying and purposeful. Nobody wants busy work. You want something that has some meaning involved, but we don't want it to be so hard that it's frustrating and people just throw their hands up and give up. And we don't want it to be childlike. That, that would be totally inappropriate. So one of the best things to do is to think about activities that might be a little bit flexible activities that don't have a complete right or wrong way to do things. What we want to do is try to enhance people's self-esteem. We want to increase their mood. We want them to feel that their self-identity, that what they did in the past and what they do now is important. So one of the things that I'd like to do is talk about the strengths that people have, because although and I'm not negating the losses that people accumulate as they travel the dementia journey. But one of the things that sometimes gets overlooked are all the strengths that people retain. And so on this slide is a list of strengths that people have. And what we're gonna do is look at them in detail and give you some ideas for each one of the strengths. So how do you connect through personal and leisure activities? 
and we tap into the strength of emotional awareness and memory because that's something that really remains for a prolonged period of time. It's true that short-term memory is often affected when somebody has Alzheimer's disease or other types of dementia, but usually long-term memories are intact for a long period of time, and we can tap into that and make use of that. So long-term memory is definitely something that's a strength people have, and the ability to be emotionally aware, that remains throughout the disease process. People might not have the same control over the emotions that they used to have, but they still have the ability to feel emotion. And that's hugely important. So the ability to feel emotion throughout the disease journey, that is something that is, again, a strength for people. So what are some of the things that can tie into these strengths? Um, personal care activities. Now there's a bunch of letters there, ADLs and IADLs, and what do those letters mean? Well, an ADL is short for activity of daily living. An activity of daily living would be something like uh, dressing, bathing, uh, feeding, grooming, uh, personal care activities. And an IADL means an instrumental activity of daily living. And that's something that's a little higher order. An IADL, an instrumental activity, might be banking or shopping or organizing a trip or organizing a hobby. I think the challenge is that the ADLs, the ability to uh, bathe ourselves, feed ourselves, toilet ourselves, dress ourselves, those often remain much further into the disease process. And those IADLs, those more complicated activities, they often take a hit a little earlier in somebody's ability to organize, plan, and carry those out. So what we really want to do is try to put quality of life back for people who struggle to put it in for themselves through activities. Some suggestions that might tie into former emotional, well, current emotional awareness and, and former memory is reminiscing uh, stories from the past. I would recommend that you don't walk up to your person and say, do you remember? But I would encourage you to say, I was thinking about the time, dot, 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 and, and you tell whatever story it is or bring out some old photos and share the photos with people. Again, I'm gonna encourage you to do this in a special way. Just like when we're talking about stories and memories, we say, I was thinking about the time, and then tell the story. With pictures, we bring out the picture or the photo, and we say, oh, look, there's Uncle Fred or Aunt Sarah. And we don't spend a lot of time quizzing. We don't spend the time saying, do you recognize that person? Do you know who that is? I would supply the answers and let the memories flow. Nobody wants their recreation to be a test. So I, I wouldn't quiz people on pictures in those scrapbooks or in those photo albums. And then listening to music. Music uh, really speaks to our emotions. A uh, piece of music can make us happy, can make us sad, can move us to tears, can make us remember things, can take us to our past. Listening to music can be an awesome activity because there is no right or wrong answer. It allows us to just tap into the emotion of the moment or the memory of the past. So I would certainly recommend that. Then when we're thinking about primary motor abilities, that's the ability to move around, manipulate yourself in space. And for most people, this remains intact for a long period of time. Their memory might be impaired, particularly their short-term memory, but their ability to move around is still pretty, pretty solid. So this means that you can take advantage of their body still functioning well, and you can encourage personal care activities. People who can get dressed by themselves, I would recommend, should get dressed by themselves. We may need to support them a little bit in helping lay out their clothes, but uh, we don't want to take away anything that they can do for themselves. 
exercise. Here's something that's good for your body. It's good for your brain. It's good to reduce stress. It's good to increase balance. Sometimes it's good for weight control. Um, so because primary motor abilities are intact, exercise can be a very, very positive activity. And exercise doesn't have to be something done outdoors. It doesn't have to be something done at the gym. It can be done under guidance, watching a video or a TV exercise show. It can be done seated. It can be done sitting down. And it can be done in secret ways. When you garden, you get exercise. When you do housework, you get exercise. So that's always a bonus. Primary motor abilities would include something like playing cards. You can reach out and place a card. You can deal the cards. Um, or sorting items, the ability to manipulate something, to pick it up in your hand and make a choice whether it goes to the right or goes to the left. So those are some activities that you might want to include that would tap into those primary motor abilities that are still intact. You can sort anything. You can sort balls of wool, buttons, coins, cards, things that got mixed up. Um, there are all sorts of opportunities for people to have something in their hands and move it around. I want to put a promo in for the Minds in Motion program. If you haven't heard of Minds in Motion, it's an awesome program. It's designed for people with um, early to mid-stage dementia and their partner in care. And you would come together for a two-hour program. It can run for six or eight weeks. And the first half of the program has to do with exercise. And it's led by a certified fitness instructor. And you can do the exercises seated or you can do them standing. So you come together as a group and you do the exercises together as a group. And then the second part of the program is a social activity. It's a fun time that focuses on building and maintaining your personal skills and your interpersonal skills. And people who attend these programs love them. They come back again and again. They find that they are comfortable because they are with other people who are um, experiencing the same sort of symptoms and the same sort of situation. So the care partners um, talk to each other, the people with dementia talk to each other, everybody interacts together, and it's a safe place to be. Um, and a very comfortable place. Everything is designed to support the people who attend the program and they flourish. They are often brighter for a prolonged period after they attend. That blood pumping uh, when you do the exercises really enhances the cognition uh, for a while. And so we, we really want you to check out the Minds in Motion program. Uh, you can find more out by contacting our office, and that information is available at the end of the slideshow. Another remaining strength is the ability to use senses, to still see and hear and smell and taste and feel. Again, personal care activities, uh, something that might have to do with the scent of hand lotion, something that might have to do with the scent of the shampoo, you can tie these things in to, for somebody to enjoy. Um, the senses, maybe a man feels a bit rough, wants, wants to get shaving. Um, again, using your senses to sort. Yeah, you probably have to use your eyes to sort. And depending on what you're sorting, you might also need um, manual dexterity and um, the sense of touch in your hands. Uh, again, music is coming up. You will find music comes up again and again and again. And music is just a real gift because it's basically free. You can get it on the radio in your own personal collections, over the internet, from the library, through concerts. There are many ways to access music. And there are many types of music. So usually there's something that everybody will enjoy. Um, a recommendation, again, for hand massage, something like that, the use of senses. Long-term memory. I mentioned that long-term memory is usually intact for the longest period of time, and sometimes long-term memory gets mixed up. But for the most part, long-term memory helps you to 
do those personal care things for yourself. It's, it's baked into the memory bank. Um, it does allow you to reminisce about things that occurred in the past. It does help you remember how to do some exercises, to get on a bicycle and still remember how to ride a bicycle. Um, it will help you playing cards. I worked in long-term care for about 30 years, and um, we had people who could play cards like nobody's business. They were good, good euchre players, um, and yet uh, they, they were definitely confused in other areas of, of their life and, and had very limited short-term memory. And I remember I asked a gentleman about that uh, once, his, his euchre playing, and he said he learned it at his mother's feet. Um, his, his parents were great euchre players, and they didn't have anybody to babysit, so of course they'd all take their kids with them when they went somewhere to play euchre, and the kids literally grew up under the card table at the feet of the parents. And so that remained intact because that is so strongly embedded in his long-term memory. Uh, sorting items, again, comes up and listening to music, yet again. One thing I would encourage to think about is that if you are going to play cards with somebody, you may need to adapt the game as time goes on. Maybe somebody played bridge, but that's getting a bit challenging. Maybe they move to euchre. If euchre gets a bit challenging, maybe you move to crazy eights or uno or something like that. Um, if it becomes a real challenge to play cards, I would suggest you might want to let go of the rules a little. I take you back to the idea that it is the interaction that is more important than the outcome. This book called All About Me, uh, you can see a picture of it on the screen, is certainly available to you through the Alzheimer's Society. You just have to give us a call or you can get it online. Just type in All About Me in a, a PDF will come up that you can actually fill in online if you like the computer. And this book, All About Me, is a great tool to communicate everything that is important to a person to somebody else. It captures their history, their likes, their dislikes, um, maybe some of their cultural background, some of their experiences. It can be used in a variety of ways. You can actually sit down and do it with the person if, if they would enjoy doing that and fill it out together, or you could fill it out and share it with people that are coming into the home. Maybe they're support workers coming into the home and you want them to really know the person the way you know the person, or maybe they're going to uh, move to long-term care. And this is a way to get all the information that you've stored in your head through all the years of caregiving that you've done out to the, the wider staff in, in the place where they're going to move to. So I would recommend that you think about picking up a copy from us. Uh, we can mail it to you if, we, if, if you can't come and get it, uh, or looking online and getting one online and filling it out. So again, let's go back to some of the strengths. Music has come up again. Music can be beneficial in so many ways. It often helps people to be excited about exercise programs. Uh, it's a pleasure often to listen to music, and depending on what you're listening to, there might be music you can sing along to. Either the person can sing along to or a group can sing along to. Um, so music has many, many strengths, and we're going to look at some of those in great detail in a couple of slides. The other remaining strength has to do with sense of humor. Um, I would suggest that you actually had to have a sense of humor in the first place but you don't lose that necessarily when dementia comes. Um, what the sense of humor does is it changes a little bit in that people might not still get jokes based on vocabulary. Um, if language is damaged, then puns um, and jokes, word jokes won't work the same way for people. But the ability to share a smile, share a laugh, giggle at something, uh, you know, enjoy an I Love Lucy episode, see something slapstick and laugh at it, uh, that certainly remains. And sometimes you can tap into that by thinking about funny stories, funny family stories that happen, or um, looking through photo albums and thinking of funny stories, watching things on TV. 
So let's talk a bit about the music piece. Um, we connect music to memories and music resides in a different part of the brain than language does. So music is available to people basically throughout the dementia journey. When people listen to music, often these are the results. People are more social, they're more engaged. They start to use language, even if they haven't been speaking much, they will often sing. Uh, they will sing old songs that they knew as children, songs that are familiar, songs that are important. So even if speaking conversation is damaged, the ability to sing is often left intact. People often become more active. If they are in a, a wheelchair or seated, they might just sway and move to the beat. They might clap their hands. Um, if they are uh, a little more mobile, they might be on their feet. They might dance. They might move. People start to, to move. Even I've seen people lying in bed that start moving to music. And it connects mainly to happy memories. Often music is associated with positive times and good experiences. So we have a music option for people called the Music Project. So at the Alzheimer's Society Waterloo Wellington, we can offer you an iPod with a charger and earphones. And we offer that at no charge. I mean, the price is right. Um, and we find out from you what uh, uh, music would interest the person. What's their personal playlist? And we download that onto the iPod. And then you are welcome to use that iPod for as long as it's a benefit to the person. We ask when you're finished with it, you return it to the society. We load it with another personalized playlist and we lend it out to somebody else. So if you are interested in this music project, please be in touch with the Alzheimer's Society for more information. And as I said, all the contact info is coming at the end of the slideshow. Um, you don't have to get an iPod through us. If you have the technology, if you have the ability, just organize it on your own. But uh, personal playlists can be a real benefit because music evokes emotion, and emotion can bring with it memory. It brings back the feeling of life when nothing else can. That's a quote from the late Dr. Oliver Sacks, renowned neurologist. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to show you a little film now. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, you will be able to see exactly what we're talking about. I have one resident that really opened her eyes. She didn't respond. As much as I tried, I knew her for two years. N no matter what I tried, massage wouldn't work, nothing worked. But when we got introduced to the iPods and the family told me the things that she liked, it was amazing once we put the iPod on her. She started shaking her feet. She started moving her, her head. Her son was just amazed. Okay, can we stop? Because now I'm getting all our... <laughs> I'm seeing her all over again. Hi, Papa. Hi, Papa. Huh? How you doing? I'm all right. I'm fine. Who, Wait. Who am I? I don't know. Okay, it's Cherry. How long has he been in the nursing home? Uh, approximately 10 years. He was having seizures, and my mother couldn't handle him at home. Of course, it affected me greatly because he was always, you know, fun loving, singing, you know, every occasion he would come out with a song, no matter where he was. I remember as a child, he used to walk us down the street, me and my brother, and he would stop and do singing in the rain. He would have us jumping and swinging around poles. He was, you know, he was good. He was always into music, you know, always loved singing, dancing. His name is Henry Drea. Uh-huh. And I'm looking more or less for religious music for him. Okay. Because he enjoys music and he always calls in the Bible. So I'd rather have that for him. 
we first see Henry inert, maybe depressed, unresponsive, and almost unalive. Henry. Yeah. Henry. Yes, yeah, so. I found your music. Uh, you want you want your music now? Not you, okay, me. Let's, let's try your music, okay? And then you tell me if it's too loud or not. Then he is given an iPod containing we know his favorite music. <laughs> And immediately, he, he lights up. His face assumes expression, his eyes open wide. He, uh, he starts to, um, to sing and to rock and to move his arms. And he's being animated by the music. And he used to always sit on the unit with his head like this. He didn't really talk to much people. And then when I introduced the music to him, this is his, his reaction ever since. <laughs> the philosopher Kant once called music the quickening art, and Henry is being quickened, he's being brought to life. Yeah. I'm going to take the music for one second, okay? Just huh? to ask you a few questions. Okay? Thank you. I'm going to give it back to you. Uh huh. Okay. The effect of this doesn't stop, because when the, uh, the, the headphones are taken off, uh, Henry, normally mute and virtually unable to answer the simplest yes or no questions, is quite voluble. Henry? Yeah? Um, do you like the iPod? Do you like the music you're hearing? Yes. Tell me about your music. Well, I don't, I don't, don't, I don't have one, I mean. Do, uh, so no do you like music? Yeah, I'm crazy about music. You play beautiful music, beautiful sound. Did beautiful. You... Did you play music when you were, uh, were you, did you like music when you were young? Yes, yes, I went to big dances and things. W what was your favorite music when you were young? Well, well I guess, uh, well, Cab Calloway was my number one band guy I liked. They did the holy, 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 the What was your fav favorite Cab Calloway song? Oh, I'll be home there Christmas. Oh, you can come plant on me with plenty of snow, mistletoe, present, red brand new tree. Ow! So, in some sense, Henry is restored to himself. He is. Uh, remembered uh, who he is and uh, he's, he's reacquired his, his identity for a while through the power of music. What, what does music do, do to you? Give me the feeling of love, no, no mass. Figure right now the world needs to come into music singing. You got beautiful music in. Beautiful, oh, lovely. And uh, I feel the band of love, the dream. Lord came to me, made me holy. I'm a holy man. So he gave me this sound. So they say, I meet you. And say, Rosalie, won't you love me? Rosalie, won't you be sweet and kind? With this beautiful new technology, you can have all the music which is significant for you in something as big as a matchbox or, or whatever. And I think this, this, this may be very, very important in uh, helping to animate, organize, uh, and uh, bring a sense of identity back to people who are, who are out of it. Otherwise, music will bring them back into it, into their own personhood, their own memories, their own autobiographies. So that's a pretty awesome clip, wasn't it? It was from Alive Inside, which is a film from the Sundance Film Festival. It's a 55 minute documentary. No, it's one hour and 15 minutes. Sorry, I apologize. One hour and 15 minutes. 
Uh, it was available on Netflix for a while. Um, if you ever get a chance to see a live inside, I would strongly recommend it. It is a phenomenal film. So I'm gonna talk about healthy brains because we know that music supports healthy brains, but there are other things that support healthy brains too. Being physically active, that's hugely important. And so that's part of activities. How can we get physical activity into our day? Uh, and often um, multiple times a day, not just uh, once, oh, there's a burst of activity, now I'm gonna sit for the next uh, 20 hours. Um, try to incorporate physical activities throughout the day. Protecting your head, gotta, gotta recommend that we do everything we can to reduce taking a blow to the head. We wanna make sure we have safe footwear. We wanna make sure there are no tripping hazards. We wanna make sure we wear seat belts in the car. Really watch out for that in any activities that you do, safety first. Challenging your brain. Uh, activities don't have to be on your feet. Activities can happen when you are uh, reading, watching, learning. Um, the idea is variety, something new or something different. That's what's going to be good for your brain. Not the same old, same old. You want new and different where possible. Being socially connected. This is hugely important and doesn't it tie beautifully into activities? Getting together for a coffee, getting together for a card game, getting together to go for a walk, getting together to attend a class, getting together to go to church. Whatever it is, if you are connected with other people, that is a total benefit for your brain. And then making healthy food choices. Um, we suggest that you eat a rainbow. I recognize that this picture is not in neon color but think about having a wide variety of healthy foods. Emphasis on the vegetables, the fruit, the whole grain. The other thing that might be of interest to you folks is something called Tools for Connection, a visiting booklet. Now, if you are in touch with the society, if you would like, these are online or you can uh, get hard copies if you need from us. Uh, we have a brochure on healthy brains. We have a brochure on visiting. Maybe the person that you're thinking about activities for isn't living at home uh, in the community or with you. Maybe they're staying in some sort of supported living environment, either a retirement home or a long-term care home. So this will give you some really good ideas about visiting, ideas about what you can do, um, and ideas how to handle challenges that sometimes come up when you're visiting in long-term care, because visiting is a huge activity. The other thing that you might want to know about connecting to, not just the person, but some supports. And so we've got a few to talk about. And the first one I'm going to talk about is called Finding Your Way. Finding Your Way was developed because unfortunately, six out of 10 people living with dementia can often go missing. They get lost, there's no warning, it happens. And why might this happen? Well, it might be that they are having a reaction to medication or they've become extra confused due to medications. It can be that they don't recognize their surroundings. They're either somewhere new or their memory bank is not accessing their current environment. It's only accessing sites that are familiar from long ago. It could be time confusion. People do get um, day and night mixed up and they get how long somebody has asked them to wait somewhere or do something for the length of time gets mixed up as well. Could be that they have an urge, they have a basic need, they need to find the bathroom and by golly, they go to look for the bathroom but they get confused and get lost. Could be that they're restless, they're, they're bored and they're restless and they go off to look for activity. Could be a, a lack of recognition, they are not somewhere that feels familiar to them. Uh, or it could be that they're trying to carry out a past behavior. In other words, trying to go pick up their kids or trying to go to work, something that they don't actually need to do currently, but they think they need to do and they go off to take care of business. So as I said, the solution is to check out the Living Safely with Dementia website, Finding Your Way. It gives practical advice on how people living with dementia 
can stay safe in the community, what care partners can do to help people stay safe. Um, it has a couple of components to it. It has some real live stories from families living with dementia. There's some video clips you can watch. There's information on safety out and about in the community and safety in the home. And it also has something that can show you the best devices that might be available through technology. There is a technology page and you can look at that page and it will give you reviews on products. We're not here to recommend a particular product over another, but it helps you think about what to look for in a product, what is available and what might work for your person, your circumstances. We do have information if a missing incident, if somebody getting lost is a concern to you, please reach out, please be in touch with the society. We have information on a variety of services in the local Guelph, Wellington, Waterloo area that are available. Now the Finding Your Way website, anybody can access that. It's an Ontario website, it's online. You just write in Finding Your Way. Then there's the Medic Alert Safely Home. That's a program that involves risk brands and um, that's available throughout North America. There is no fee for finding your way. It's free on the internet. There is a fee for a Medic Alert bracelet, but Medic Alert is a registered charity. If you cannot afford a Medic Alert bracelet and need one, you can talk to them and work something out. Then in Wellington County, there's something called Project Lifesaver, which is a radio transmitter wristband that um, is available through uh, the police forces, through the victim services, um, and for people who, who unfortunately regularly be, become uh, disoriented and lost. And then in both Waterloo and Wellington, um, you can, again, at no charge, uh, sign up for the Vulnerable Persons Registry and register the person as somebody with memory loss with the police forces. There is a cost for the Project Lifesaver, uh, but if you absolutely need one and are in straighted circumstances, arrangements can be made to support you. Uh, I have to give kudos to our local service clubs, and uh, it was the uh, the um, Kiwanis Club that stepped up and said they would make sure that everybody had what they needed to be safe. So this is a bit more about the Medic Alert bracelet. Um, Medic Alert you may be familiar with, and usually it's a red bracelet, but for the Medic Alert Safely Home, we call it MASH for short, for the MASH bracelet, it's blue colored, ever, ever so slightly different. You can certainly put more information on it than just that somebody might be um, confused and um, have memory loss. You can also put um, physical things like if they're allergic to penicillin or they have a heart condition or they're diabetic, etc. cetera. Um, the information for this is available to you online or you can phone Medic Alert as well. So what do you do if somebody goes missing? Let's say you encouraged activity and they went out and they went for a walk and they didn't come home when you thought they were gonna come home. The thing to do immediately is to call 911. Don't wait. If somebody who is vulnerable has gone missing, there is no 24, 48 hour waiting. You call right away. Um, when the police arrive, if the vehicle, if they've gone in the car, <laughs> you wanna have the details about the car available to them. One of the things that could make your life easier is that on the Finding Your Way website, they actually have an ID kit. So if you went on the website and got a copy of that and filled it out and had it ready to go, that can speed things up for the officers if a search is ever necessary. Um, and then if for any reason you have registered your person with either Medic Alert or the Vulnerable Persons Registry or any other safety uh, protocols, make sure that you let the police know that as well when they come to help find. We have a lot of services at the Alzheimer's Society Waterloo Wellington and we're proud to offer them to you at no charge. So I think that's really important to know. 
There's no reason that you don't reach out and take advantage of supportive counseling. We have registered social workers available. There are education sessions in person. And uh, since you're watching this video online, you know that there are also uh, videos available to you over the internet. Uh, we support the music project that we talked about. Minds in Motion is one of our activities. Um, recommended you to the Finding Your Way website. In our program guide, which we put out um, every few months, um, which is also available on our website, you can tap in and see all the different social and recreational activities that are available in the area. Uh, again, we're talking Guelph Wellington here and uh, Waterloo. That would include uh, the region of Waterloo as well as the region of Wellington. Um, we offer group education, group sessions. One of the things that I want to draw your attention to is that we have a lot of fabulous videos on our YouTube channel. Um, when you go to our main web page for our website and you scroll right to the bottom and you click the YouTube icon, it'll bring you to this page right here. And uh, there are some activities that you can do. Here are some examples. For example, I'm just gonna bring my cursor up. This is called Name That Cake. So there's an eight minute activity that you and your partner can do. Um, uh, name that tune. This is a really fun one because musicians from the Kitchener Symphony played and then you get to play along and figure out what they're playing. Uh, we have physical activities too, not just cognitive. Here's a seated yoga program. Here's um, another intellectual cognitive stimulation, a question of threes, Daffy word game, Jeopardy, back to a Minds in Motion program. I would encourage you, if you look at exercises and you say, holy, that's an hour long, I'll never manage an hour, don't panic. It's not an hour of cardio at all, and I promise you the hour will go pretty quickly. Our leader, Jennifer, that you can see pictured in a lot of these videos, um, make sure that there are options for everybody. You can do it seated, you can do it standing, it's not all cardio, there's also strengthening, there's also stretching. So come to our YouTube page and check it out. If you want more, we have lots more and it's listed under playlists, right up here, playlists. If you click on the playlists, it will break things down for you activities, exercises, education, resources, and uh, lots of details there for you. If you need more um, information about uh, interacting with somebody who has dementia, we have a very special program from Mount Sinai. It's an enhanced care program. And what they do is they work with you in a very specific way on a very particular problem. So it's not a general um, overview of information. It is problem solving at a personal level. And I would recommend that to you. Just again, call the society. That's all it takes, one phone call. The other thing, and uh, I'm sure there are many people who talk to you about money is that in order for us to say, yes, our services are offered to you at no charge, we have to raise a minimum of 60% of our operating budget. So if you are in a position to make a donation, we would be very grateful because what you would be doing is supporting quality of life for people living with dementia and their partners in care. So there are a couple of ways you can do it. Uh, we have a coffee break. We kick it off in September every year and it runs from September to December. You can get information about how to host a coffee break and raise some funds. Here is our contact information. I would recommend to you that when you phone, you can leave us a message. If we are on the phone, you will get an answering machine. Please leave the message so that we can call you back and get you what you need. Uh, we do have offices. Um, they are currently closed because we are in a COVID-19 uh, situation. But uh, if you call ahead, you can make an appointment and uh, we can get you what you need. So folks, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and oh, there's my face again, so back with you. 
Once again, if you want anything, if you have questions, please call us. You can ask for extension 2090, or you can leave a message on the general voice mailbox, and we will get back in touch with you. I hope that you have some ideas for activities and that you recognize how important just everyday activities are. That old phrase, if you don't use it, you'll lose it, it rings true for people with dementia. So I encourage you to support folks to do as much as they can, as long as they can. We do have a lot of material like personal care sheets and activity suggestions. So if you would like written material, please give the office a ring and we'll send something out to you. Thanks again. I hope you have a great day. Bye for now.